Hello, family. Or in uh, Hebrew, Miss Pokot. And um, I am so delighted to bring you another Bible study lesson uh, on the awesome names of God. Uh, this is a good way for us to really get to know his character, who he is by his names. So we're going to go ahead and get started, but first we're going to pray. Abba Yahweh, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings. And we bless you back. We bless you with all of our soul and all that is within us. We bless your holy name. We thank you for, for your son. We thank you for his death, shedding his blood, and we thank you for Holy Spirit, and we invite Holy Spirit into our midst, and Holy Spirit, I ask that you would open up everyone's ears to hear, and eyes to see, and hearts to receive what you want them to receive. What do you, what do you want them to know? What do you want them to learn? And give revelation and understanding. I thank you and you guide my guide my tongue, guide my heart and my mind as I teach this lesson in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start sharing screen and, um, and we're going to continue with the awesome names of God, and this is part two. And so I'm going to begin the slideshow so that you can see the awesome names of God. Now, uh, last week, um, I went over some names, and uh, I, did, I did mention that the names meant much more than what you call a person. It was more than just a pretty name. It reflected the person's character and what the person giving, giving the name wanted for the person who is being named or the baby who is being named. And sometimes God will change, will change names, change a person's name. For instance, he changed uh, Abram's name to Abraham. And he changed uh, Joseph's name, uh, excuse me, Jacob's name to Israel. So God will change names and the people would also name to, uh, to uh, give direction for their destiny, to speak into their destiny. Every time someone will call their name, they will be speaking into their destinies. And of course, some events were related to that time, they will be named after those events. Okay, now last time, last lesson, uh, I talked about several names of God and I did talk about Yah uh, and how the name of Yah is composed of the first two letters and it's also translated as J-A-H, which is still pronounced Yah. And it appears often in names such as Elijah, Adoniah. It is found in the new, in the King James version of the Bible. And also I went over, I went to the slave database records uh, and I was able to show you so many of the slaves from the transatlantic slave trade whose name had Yah in them. And and so uh, and and so I was able to uh, show you that and emphasize that Second Chronicles seven fourteen speaks of the Hebrews. If my people who are called by my name, and I showed you all of those names, will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal them from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So we, we're going to have to, because those were our ancestors, we're gonna have to do exactly what Second Chronicles 7 and 14 is telling us 
that we're going to have to seek his face. We're going to have to pray. Uh, we're going to have to turn from our wicked ways and, and, and uh, Abba Yahweh will hear from his throne in heaven and he will forgive our sins and heal our land. And this is a time where uh, if we don't have uh, Jesus, you know, we will be, you know, might tend to be afraid of what's going on in the politics and what uh, what this president is doing, trying to have an insurrection and pitting one per, uh, one a group against another. So I believe, this is me, I believe that it's part of the judgment on America, uh, but we'll see what God is doing. Amen. All right, let's move further. Now, the name that we're going to talk about today is Adonai. And uh, it's pronounced Adonai. And Adonai means my foundation or my Lord. My foundation or, or my Lord. And it comes from the noun Adon, which means Mr. or Sir in our vernacular, Mr. or Sir. So it's used in the Bible. There are several names with uh, Adonai in it. I don't, I don't need Bezek. I don't need Yah. That has two of God's names. I don't need Kam. I don't need Ram. I don't need Zedek. Uh, and so Adonai by itself is not a name for God. It's not a proper name, but it is a title. So when the Hebrews call the creator Adonai Yahweh, they are saying Mr. Yahweh. Or when we when it's translated from Lord Jesus into Hebrew, it is Adonai Yahushua. Adonai Yahushua. So those are that's that's one of the names, Hebrew names of God. Of God. Okay, now um, we're gonna talk a lot about the name L. E L. That's pronounced L. And L, of course, is translated to mean God. But let's talk about the different uh, uh, different uh, forms of L that are used in the Bible. Let's look at uh, Genesis 33, 18 through 20. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city in Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. When he came from Padan Aram and pitched his tent before the city. And he bought a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of, of money. And he erected there an altar and called it Elohe El Israel meaning the God of Israel, because Canaan was a pagan uh, uh, country at that time or, or region. And so here is Jacob coming to establish uh, the, the uh, worship of the God of Israel. So that's, that's El Elohe Israel, which is the God of Israel. All right, now, um, another form of L is used in the Bible from Genesis 46 and 3. Uh, it actually is 2 and 3. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said. Now, and this is after Jacob's name was changed. God changed it to Israel uh, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. Now, this is the time when there was a, a great famine in the land and Joseph, uh, uh, Jacob's son, was already ruling uh, in Egypt at that time. He was second in command. And he had already suffered uh, those years of prison. And so uh, uh, Jacob, the story, a lot short, short of the story is Jacob sent his other sons down to buy food. And so they, they uh, did not know who Joseph was. And so Joseph 
uh, Joseph put the food in their sacks and he also uh, put their money in their sacks. So they were afraid when they came back. Uh, but then that food gave out. So uh, Joseph um, sent for uh, his he sent for his brother when they came the second time, and so all of the all of the sons went down, and Jacob revealed him Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. They wept and they wept on each other's neck, and and so all was well. And he sent for his father. So this is this is Yahweh speaking to Jacob. Don't be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I'm going to make a great nation. Okay, so El, El, um, God of your father, God of your father. That's another name for El. Okay, the God of your father, and also there is um, there is uh, El El Yon, and I didn't put the name. So uh, El El Yon is the the Most High God. Um, and and so because thou uh, in uh, the scriptures it said because thou has made the Lord I don't know which is my refuge even the Most High that habitation now this is Psalms ninety one this is Psalms ninety one because thou has made the Lord which is my refuge even the Most High thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And so, and so, uh, if you have uh, seen, if you have had the chance to listen to the teaching, my teaching on Psalms 91, we know that the Most High is our dwelling. And so, um, this is why we can say, No evil will befall us nor shall any plague come near our dwelling because our dwelling place is in the most high. And verse 11, it says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So this is Psalms 91, uh, uh, nine verses nine through 12. And we are talking about El El Yom, which means the most high El or the most high, or the most high. So that's another name for El, how El is used. And let's look at El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the almighty God. Uh, and it's used it's in this reference, Genesis 17 and 1, and also Genesis 35, 10 through 11. And it reads, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, saying to him, I should have called him Abram, that's how you pronounce it. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. This is uh, El Shaddai talking to Abram. And in verse 10, uh, uh, verse 10 in Genesis 35, it says, and God said unto him, now this is God changing Jacob's name to Israel when and when Jacob struggled with God, wrestled with him all night long to deliver him and his family and his possessions from the hand of Esau, which was his twin brother who he thought was coming to kill him and, and his family. And so God said to him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God almighty. And he told Jacob, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings 
shall come out of thy loins. And we know that is in reference to King David and all of the kings that succeeded him and the, the, the most high, the almighty God king, which is Yeshua, the king of kings and Lord of lords. And we know that we are Jacob's descendants. And so that is an honor that we are part and we are descendants from this chosen people. And so if you hadn't seen that, so make sure you look at all of my videos on a chosen people or the chosen people, why you need to know. And we're going to look at uh, uh, another scripture where God is speaking to Moses. And uh, this is Exodus uh, 6, 2 and 3. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty or El Shaddai. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. So he's introducing himself to Moses who will uh, then introduce him to the people as Yahweh. And then Shaddai was the name by which God was known, of course, by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was known as El Shaddai. And so though there were several other names that he was known to Abraham, but mostly El Shaddai, the almighty God. And El Shaddai also has another meaning. It means the many-breasted one. Uh, the, the God Almighty of blessings. So I just want to plug that in, that El Shaddai has, has several nuances of meaning. Okay, then the next one um, is that, okay, I've already got that one. Okay, so we're going to do El Olam. El Olam means everlasting God. God created time, yet he exists outside of time and beyond time. So before the creation of the universe, there was God with no beginning and no end. And God never changes. His word, his kingdom, and everything about him never changes and never ends. Now, there's so much uh, so much about God. There's so many different names of God. So us getting just getting into the Hebrew names is hard to know which one applies to which. But I believe that that this God is probably going to be Elohim, Elohim, and then this one will be Yahweh because Elohim is is associated with the creation. And, and it says God never changes. His word, his kingdom, and everything about him never changes and never ends. God is unchangeable. And that's something that we can just rejoice in. He's unchangeable. He's dependable. Oh, he's trustworthy. And he is consistent. And see, when we're going through stuff, you know, we have to remember that God never changes and that he is dependable. Another word for dependable is faithful. And also, he is trustworthy. We can trust him with our lives, with everything that we have. And we can, we can trust that he's going to be consistent. And look at Psalms 91 and 2. And it, and it reads, this is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. He, he prays and said, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou has formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art El Olam, there thou art God. So God never changes. He is just unchangeable. I love that song that we sing, unchangeable. He's unstoppable. He's, he's, that's who he are. That's who he is. And we sing to him, that's who you are. And then we have Hebrews 13 and eight, Jesus Christ, 
or Yeshua HaMashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. So he's the same. He hasn't changed. There's a lot of people that have thought that things have changed uh, from the from the book, from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. God never changes. He's never changed. He's never changed his ways. He is consistent and trustworthy. Now we have another uh, name of God, which is El Hai, El Hai, which is the living El or the living God. And Deuteronomy 5 and 26 introduces him as El Hai. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and live. So just a little background information. This is when God came down on the mountain and he came down with fire and thunder and lightning and earthquake and, and he was speaking and, and the people actually saw him and, and, um, uh, and they said that they heard the voice of the living God, but they ran away. Joseph, uh, Moses said, come on, let's draw closer. And they were running away. They were afraid. Uh, they were afraid because they believed that if they actually saw God, that they would die. So this is why they're saying uh, we had heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and live. And so there is, uh, there are pictures, and I should have included that, of the mountain, uh, Mount Sinai, where, they, where uh, it is actually burnt on top. So this is where God came down to them. Uh, this is probably about, um, about 1,500 to 2,000 years ago. Okay, so he's the living God. El Hai. And Psalms 42 and 2, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, the psalmist said, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. And he says, when shall I come and appear before God? Now, the, now verse 1 says, as the deer panteth for the water brooks, so my soul longs after thee, O God. And then he says, my soul thirsted for God. So if you can picture a deer uh, running uh, on the plain and uh, then he gets thirsty, his body is probably wet with perspiration and he's thirsty. That's how we ought to be for our God, our El Hai. We should be thirsty. We should be thirsty every day because even Jesus said in the Beatitudes, he said, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst after righteousness for you shall be filled well when we hunger and thirst after righteousness we're hungering and thirsting after Jesus because he is our righteousness and look at Psalms 84 and 2 this is another one that makes our heart begin to pant for God he says my soul longeth, yea even fainted for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. So we are thirsty. Our hearts long, even though we sometimes we're not conscious of it, but we just long to have that sweet presence when everything else around us is going haywire and 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 it seems like it's going against us then we, we long and we thirst for the presence of God because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. We thirst for him. He's the living water. He's the living God. And we hunger for him. He is the bread of life. And if we eat of him every day, we'll live forever. And if we drink of the living water, we'll never thirst again. So this is El Ha'i, the living God. Now the next one is El Roi, El Roi, and it's the God of seeing, the all-seeing God. And uh, this is uh, in Genesis, I should have, uh, I didn't put that, I was kind of going fast and I got 
distracted. But anyway, this is Genesis, uh, and uh, this is Hagar, and uh, Hagar had fled from Sarah, who uh, who uh, uh, was kind of outdone with her because she had given Hagar to Abraham to uh, to uh, conceive a child. And she would get children that way, but Hagar kind of got a little snip, snippy and proud and everything. So uh, Sarah began to miss, uh, well, began to try to put in check, I guess, not really mistreated because she had gotten proud and a little insolent. But uh, then uh, Hagar ran away and uh, the Lord was looking out for her because she was carrying Abraham's seed, Abraham's child, Ishmael. And so uh, she called on the name of the Lord and the Lord spake to her. And thou God seest me, for she said, have I also here looked after him that seeth me. So she had a conversation and interaction with El Roy. And that is the first we get of God being called El Roy. Okay. Now the next name is El Gibor. That means he's a God of strength. And if you look at uh, Isaiah, oh, I missed all of my references this time, but hopefully you can, as you listen, you can write them down. Isaiah 9, chapter 9, and the sixth verse. And he says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, El Gibor, the everlasting Father, El Olam, and the Prince of Peace. And there is a name for that that we're going to go in in, uh, in later studies. That we're going to go over in later studies. But yes, this is this is uh, Jesus being called all these awesome names of God because we know that He is God in the flesh. And, and, and you might hear this around this season uh, because that's when uh, his birth is celebrated, even though he probably was not born in December. But uh, this is a wonderful scripture that points to the birth of our Savior and our Adonai, Jesus, the Messiah. All right, now, I also have uh, some names which, um, which have L in them, and I'm going to go over those. The first one is Daniel, and Danny, Danny actually it's pronounced Danielle, Daniel, or Daniel, because the A has a, a, a dark sound, Daniel, and that means God's judgment, and we know we call him Daniel, but his name has L in it. And we, we know that Daniel was the prophet that uh, was in the lion's den and he was thrown in there because he, he was praying against the king's um, orders. And they threw him in the lion's den. And so what happened, the lions became a nice, soft, fluffy pillow for Daniel because he believed in the power of his God. And God spared, spared Daniel, shut the lion's mouth. And so when they came to see what had happened the next morning, Dan Daniel was fine. He was doing great because he had had a good night's sleep in that den. Amen. And now we have Israel and Israel and we already went over, but Israel is one who has struggled with God or one who has wrestled with God. And we know that from, uh, know that I've, I've mentioned that Israel actually wrestled with God to protect his family. And then we have this name, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God is with us. We are, all, we are always to remember that Jesus is called Emmanuel and he is with us. He never leaves us. We leave him now. 
Sometimes we got to drift away and we leave him. But Jesus is right where we left him and he will never, ever, ever move. And he'll be waiting for us to return to him when we drift away. And another name, as I mentioned, this is Abraham's only son by Hagar, and it's Ishmael. And Ishmael means God hears or God listens. And so they named Abraham named him Ishmael because he was thanking God for hearing his prayer about having a, a son or an heir. Because God promised him he would give him an heir. But Abraham and Sarah kind of took matters in their own hand. And there comes Ishmael. But Ishmael is God hears and God listens. Now, I thought this was interesting that, uh, that uh, the angels' names have L in them. They end with L. And we have Gabriel, or we call him Gabriel, Gabriel, which means the strength of God. And we have Mikael, that's how it's pronounced in Hebrew, Mikael, which is who is like God. And another angel is Raphael, which means God's medicine. So he is the angel that actually brings healing when we cry out to God for healing. He is the, he is, and, and my, and Mikael is the uh, angel that has been put over the Hebrews. He is the God of the Hebrews. And now you will always find him uh, when the nation of Israel needed, uh, God sent him to the no nation of Israel to protect uh, the nation of Israel until they became disobedient. But he was the angel that protected the nation, the Hebrews. And so uh, we see in Daniel, when Daniel had fasted and and an angel came and said that uh, that his, he was Daniel was beloved, and he had to go back because he was fighting the king of Persia, and so he had to go back and help Mikael or Michael, and so he left Daniel after Daniel uh, fasted for twenty one days, and we know that Gabriel or Gabriel uh, was the angel that announced to. Uh, that announced to Zechariah that he was going to have a son that was going to prepare the way, the way of the Messiah. And we know that Gabriel also came to uh, Mary, the virgin mother of, of Jesus, and told her what was, what was uh, that she was highly favored and that she would have a son conceived. He was a holy holy baby and he would be conceived in her room without her, her ever knowing a man and it would be conceived by the holy ghost god would be the father of jesus and so uh gabriel did that and so we have them gabriel coming to announce significant events to certain people uh, of the israelites and, and so uh, we have Ariel, which means God's lion. I know that they use Ariel in Disney uh, shows and cartoons, but Ariel is actually the name of an angel. Uh, and it means God's lion. So that's God's lion who, and I don't, I'm, and i be honest, I'm not so sure what his function is. I will have to read up and study on that. Uh, but that's what his name means. And these other four, these are the four angels. Uh, their names are found in the book of Enoch. E-N-O-C-H, Enoch or Enoch. And, um, and uh, these are Selafiel, Selafiel, Uriel, Barak, Kiel, and I know that that name has something to do with praise, because Barak means praise, 
and Yehudiel is another name, but all of these are angels. And I think there are other angels that are named, uh, but I will have to read the book of Enoch. And you remember the last lesson I talked about, uh, I talked about that the uh, Apocrypha or some of the left out books from the canon uh, uh, you know, that I have purchased. And so I have read some of them. There's a lot to read. And so I have read some of them. But anyhow, uh, uh, we are done. And I just gave out a battery power, it looks like. But anyway, we are done with this lesson. I don't want to tax you tax you so much. But uh, and next time we will go over a third uh, the, some more names of God, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna kind of close it in a little bit to focus on Jesus and what He is and who He is to us. The names that incorporate Him. So, um, and all of them are Him, but uh, these are names specific to His mission here on the earth. So uh, hopefully this has blessed you and you found out some more about who God is. The more we know him, the more we love him, love him. And this is uh, Jesus' last intercessory prayer here on earth, a long prayer anyway, in John 17, where the first thing he prayed to Father God was that, Father, I pray that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus, your son, whom you sent. That would be something that you can just turn to and look at, even after we, uh, you uh, close out this video, John in 17, because that was his prayer, for us to know God and his son. And so we don't have to think that God doesn't want us to know, but we have to search. We have to be attentive and listen because to know God, uh, God will reveal himself to those who seek him. And you know, seek means to search out. It means to look for something. You're looking for a treasure because that's who he is. He is a treasure to us. He is our God. He's our savior. He is, uh, he is like none other. There is no other God but God, but our Yahweh, but our Elohim, uh, but our El and, our, and uh, all of the names of God. So we're going to pray, and I'm going to pray a blessing on you, and then we're going to see you in the next video. Oh, Abba Yahweh, we thank you for revealing, revealing our uh, yourself to us. We want to know. We want to learn, Abba. We want to know you. We want to know all about you. We want to know all about Jesus, Yahushua, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our friend. We want to know. So make us even more hungry. Make us even more thirsty after your righteousness. And we thank you. We thank you and we give you all the glory for every revelation, for every aha moment, for every, every line upon line, precept upon precept that you are teaching us. In Yeshua's mighty, mighty name, amen. And now the parting blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. Go in the shalom of God. Love you all, family, and we'll see you in the next video. And I am out. I'm out. Bye-bye for now.